And again, why is it doing it that way? So Anya's going to be joining me here in just a minute for our last week of Ask the Expert. Ask it. She's from Rise Visible. And uh, always good to have that expert on with us. Always good to have her on with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay for the 1st of September. First day of the month, so I cannot complain. I am not quite quitting. (laughs) Quite quitting. That is still on everybody's mind. Quiet quitting. Have you heard this one? Yeah. That's when uh, you're just basically doing the minimum to get by. Just barely doing it. Barely, you know, I guess they used to call it phoning it in. Look, it's not anything new. You know, I, it's, I always love when new terms show up for old behavior. It's like, I always remember when I took uh, German back in the day. German was considered a, it's, it's actually considered a dramatic, I mean, English is a dramatic language. It's one of the hardest ones to pick up because uh, people, uh, it's a tough language. We have all these rules in English, but we break every one of them. In German, they don't break the, the rules. They have, you have to listen because all the verbs come at the end. But you know, in English, we have all these rules we break. And we have a different meaning for different words. I mean, for the same word, it's like all these different meanings. And we do that for different things we come up with. So quiet quitting is the new thing for loading it in or just basically not being motivated to work. So yeah, I'm motivated. Because the boss is he's he's kind of a hardcore. Hardcore dude. Yeah. He pushes. And pushes and pushes and pushes. Let me see. Oh, that's gonna turn off my theme song. That's just gonna get really old after a while. We're talking about this week. And hi this week. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I was just uh stalling. You were stalling, thank you. I uh mm-hmm. I finished something early and then I was like, oh, I got 10, 15 minutes, you know, big deal. And then I completely just like got lost feeding birds outside. I usually get lost feeding my dog, um, playing on my phone. I usually try to do some downtime before I start this. Like, I'm, like, I'm just going to chill and do whatever. And I just, I totally forget. I've got this. Yeah, for sure. All of a sudden I heard a, a, like a thing at the door and I thought someone knocked at the door and I'm like, what's going on? I walk over there and my scrub J actually like literally knocked on the door for food. <laughs> Not really knocked, but he was butter. doing something. <laughs> did something on, over there to to let me know that I hadn't, I hadn't put the peanuts out today. I was like, oh, okay. Got oh my gosh. That is funny. It's like, dude, uh, I just flew all the way over here and you didn't put the food out. Seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have them and I have, uh, I have crows that, that reside here. I have, uh, I feel like a Disney princess because I can, um, I can go outside and go, Hey, hello, where are you? And a big ass black crow will just. You don't have to break into song. <laughs> and then it just lands on my deck. You don't, no. you don't, you don't break into song at all? <laughs> no, but apparently um, my partner says I have a dear, a Disney princess um, voice when I sing. So um, that, yeah. See that's that's interesting. I don't I don't have that same experience with crows uh, from 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 my uh, my past. We uh, we used to live on a parkway. Or my 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 mom still lives at the house in Denver, and uh, it used to be a major thoroughfare to the old airport before they moved it. And uh, my son was at the mow the lawn in the front yard, and <laughs> no, the crows would never let me. They would dive bomb my head every time I was trying to mow the front yard. It, it was ridiculous. They were always after me. Now, I figured there was a nest or something, obviously. But still, no, they didn't like me. That's very funny. They, they did not like me at all. 
So I, I usually had to, I usually got a lot of exercise mowing that lawn in the front yard. So. Wow. Yeah. They, they just weren't having it. No. I wonder why that's interesting. Cause usually they, their nests are way high. Mm-hmm. So you would think that mowing the lawn would, you know, it wouldn't do that. Well, and I also Party. figured, I also figured, you know, well, we're all the same color. Can't we just get along? But no. <laughs> That's, funny you say that. <laughs> That's very funny because when I walk funny. out and I wear like, you know, a black sweatshirt, I'm thinking like, they might think I'm one of theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much this time, pal. From the business world, um, I've been hitting LinkedIn a lot and replying a lot to the, the topic of the day, quiet quitting. Oh, for sure. I'm, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know much about that. I just keep, I keep hearing it. Can you... Can you tell me what it means? Like, yes, I will be very happy to to, to tell you because it's it's not new. Uh, well, right, that's what I read. I read like it's like been around for years, and yeah. yet it's become a buzzword. They just changed yeah. the name of it. Phoning it in. Remember, remember that phoning it in. Yeah, there you go. You mean calling in and and phoning in a quit? No, no, phoning in your job. You know, just barely doing it, phoning it oh. in. You know, doing just enough to get by. I see. You're doing the bare minimum. Um, you know, this is my spin on this. And it's I think it's really interesting that no one's really looking at this. And I and I'm pushing this more and more every time I talk to thought leaders, uh, you know, executive group leaders, people that are in leadership management. Um, we talk a lot about how the pandemic hit the supply line or the supply chain, right? And how that's affected everything. They had no models for what was going to happen afterwards, right? Well, we haven't paid attention as a society in our nation about the effect of digital media on interpersonal communications and how we talk. For real, right? for real. So you and I, we talk all the time. We use like face-to-face, we use Zoom, we use all these different mediums of communication because we try to keep that interpersonal communication relationship, right? Mm-hmm. But the other generations have used the digital world to absolutely replace sure. interpersonal communication. Mm-hmm. Now, in the workplace, where mm-hmm. you go to work for someone who inspires you to be a part of the culture, and they, they're there to inspire you to grow that culture, to be a part of the culture, to help the company be something that's going to be amazing. That's the way it used to be. But then what happens? Um, the upper management, they find a lot of the new generational, and I hate to use just millennials, but I'm sorry, that's where it's really coming from. And yes, they're sharp, they're smart, they have all these things, they go, they go, they go, but they don't have the interpersonal skills. Sure. So they're just going down the phones, they're working all the technology, they're working all the technology, they're advancing the company, everything just goes and goes and goes but the interpersonal dynamics for growth and motivation are not there Mm -hmm. because they're too busy thinking about themselves. So what's happened? Well, they may be advancing, but they don't have any way of advancing anybody else or motivating anybody else. Mm -hmm. So the supply chain dies and then you have a pandemic, (laughs) Mm -hmm. put in a global pandemic. And then everybody goes home for almost two years Sure. <laughs> and nobody's talking. And then you, we all go back to work <laughs> into a culture that nobody's really paid attention to for two years. Now we got two years of not working on interpersonal relationships. Mm-hmm. Holy freaking cow. Mm. Yeah, That's two probably. years of not working on a relationship with someone that you work with or work for. It's true. Yeah, they're just going to dial it in. Yeah. They're just going to kind of hang back. Because you weren't motivating them before. Yep. Because you didn't have a relationship with them. Two years later, you still don't have a relationship with them. You don't know anything about them. You've got done nothing to motivate them before. You've done nothing to build that relationship with them to make them feel like this is the best place to be. And I will do anything to help this company grow because I believe in this company. Well, yeah. And the people that are also... There are, there are the hybrids where there are people that are, are in office and there are people that are remote and the people that are remote are not 
have the same type of relationship with those that are in office at all. Correct. Where you just, you know, you don't get to be a part of the same thing. And and that's just a product of what's happening, but still there is a way to create inclusivity. There is a way to, to do that. And I, I definitely have experienced that very recently where I have been, I was the only outside source really far away. And, you know, you never really feel like you're a part of the culture, no matter what you do. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I think but there that, isn't anything, but like to your point, but there mm-hmm. isn't anything in place to help cr- facilitate that company culture to embrace the remote or hybrid work and create conversations and relationships. It's just kind of been like, oh, okay, well now we're dealing with remote and it's just the way it is. It's like, no, there has to be new ways to communicate and make help people feel included and find ways to be connective because we need we need a tribe we do we just do and you use the key word anya use the the word right there tribe we need a tribe i believe and this has always been my 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 total belief since i came back from europe from the military i was in the military for a few years and i came back from germany and i recognized something right away with the onset of technology and, you know, when that was the Facebook days, but just the old days when that took off. We're the society that, we're the society that uses technology, technology to replace communication. Totally. Everybody else uses it to, to facilitate communication because they, they have the tribe mentality. They will maintain the tribe, but because. You're right. Huh? You're right. You're 100% yeah, we're, right. We're, we're made up of many tribes here. We, we have all these different tribes from everywhere else. And we are quick as Americans because we, we, we want to make this happen as fast. We have this fast food mentality. It's like we want to get to the order, get to the window, pick it up and go. And we don't worry so much anymore about that interpersonal relationship side of things. And I, I make the joke all the time when I was little and I didn't get along with someone well, my dad would tell me, well, tomorrow you're going to get with that person and you either going to have a fight or you're going to figure it out. <laughs> right. It, it's like that whole ghosting thing. Yeah. Everybody, it's the ghosting thing is absolutely ludicrous. It's like no one understands how to deal with conflict resolution as human beings it's just ridiculous the amount of ghosting that happens where people are like well i don't really like it so i'm just gonna disappear right and it's like well but could we have worked that out was it that big of a deal or people are really quick to cut people off too you know and in different circumstances i mean there are certain circumstances where people don't align well, right? Like they come together to do a project and perhaps uh, into it, they realize we don't really align well. Like we're not working well together. Fine. You have that conversation and you just say like, listen, like we're not aligning. You know, I would advise you to maybe work with someone else or I can give you referrals, right? Like, let me, let me help that conversation and move you somewhere else where it's not like, well, screw you we don't align. We're not friends. I'm not going to help you. It's like, there's this conversational transition in business. It's like, but I can give you to somebody else. I can continue to help you rather than just completely just ghosting or cutting. Ghosting, cutting and unfriending. You yeah. Ghosting, unfriending and goodbye. Mm-hmm. Like I that, mean, there that, are reasons for that. There that are reasons no sense. to do that. To Absolutely. unfriend and, you know, and just cut people off. There are, there are levels in which we have to look at and go like, yeah, if somebody's a, a narcissist, it's probably best to just. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for personal safety reasons, and if someone's being over the top, completely rude, completely wrong, completely just whatever the case, I get it. 100%. Yes. Go somewhat. But if it's just. um, Okay. Uncomfortable. A little uncomfortable. Or I don't agree with you. Or all of a sudden you said something that I don't like. Ghost. Mm -hmm. What the freak? Come on, Martha. What the freak just happened there? I, I, I'm trying to imagine 
when I was back in high school and I was in Lincoln Douglas debates, I was doing debate class and I actually used to go out to debate tournaments all the time. I'm cool. trying to imagine if we had debates and someone didn't like my point and they just were able to go, hmm, unlike <laughs> if that was the strategy back then, instead of actually being able to come up with a counterpoint or did just well, people actually... are disposable marty people yeah. are disposable you know when it, this is something that somebody brought up to me recently when when a circumstance happened and i was like how was that how was i easily just disposed of like that like i didn't understand the the cutoff like how it was so abrupt when i had felt that I had created a connection. Uh, I felt like there was an authentic uh, relationship there. Um, And it was virtual. It was definitely not um, in person. And I had somebody sit down with me and we were talking about it. And they're like, because you were the only one of the only virtual people. No one ever saw you in person. No one ever had you in their presence to feel your energy and look at you as a human being. The fact that we're remote removes that humanity. I mean, granted, all of this technology is amazing for people like me who who are limited in, in what I can do being in the public. And me However, as well. Same thing. You know, same with you. However, you know, it does create a sense, a lack of feeling like somebody's real. And it's real easy to not consider somebody's emotions. Like if you're working with somebody and you have one person that's working remote and you have another person you see in the office every day, but you have another person that's remote that you see in meetings and whatever, but then you see so-and-so every single day. If somebody said you have to fire one of those two people, you're going to be more apt to fire the remote person for two reasons. One you don't have the same connection with them. I mean, scientifically, when we meet somebody in person, there was an energy exchange. It's just scientific. Right. But but secondarily, it's, it's also easier to fire somebody or let them go when you can turn off the computer and never answer them again. (laughs) Richard! Uh (laughs) Wow! Whoa. <laughs> there it goes. There, oh, there she blows. Yeah, please. You okay? Well, anyway, that was the dog. Okay. Live he TV. Jumped, live he jumped TV. up and, yeah, it's live TV. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. But, okay. you know, and I agree with your point 100%, because I think the other side of that is it's a catch-22 for that employer, too, because they'll make that assumption. Okay, let me get rid of that 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 remote person because you know i can ghost them right and then because of that damage done to the interpersonal side they also don't have those interpersonal skills with that person that is right there so then down the road that person thinking they're safe ends up doing the quiet quitting thing i'm safe so now i can do just enough to get by right because if anything you possibly were the competition or maybe you were the, I wouldn't even say competition. I think having people in your same grade or same area or whatever, that helps companies grow, right? But if there's nobody else, then there's nobody else. So you have this false sense of security that, well, I'm here. Nobody else is going to do my job, so I can do just enough to get by. So that means quiet quitting is going to be skyrocketing because what's the boss going to do? You can't get rid of me. I'm the only one that could do my job. Well, sure. And also the interesting thing is I keep seeing this thing about quiet quitting. And now that you've explained to me kind of what it is, I am going to have to write a blog on this because I believe that there's a flip side to this and it's called quiet firing. Oh, absolutely. And that is somebody slowly taking away your job, taking away, passing your stuff on to other people and playing it off like, well, what are you talking about? We, we don't know. In hopes that you will feel a sense of, well, I don't have anything to do, or there's really not a place for me, or rather than just being authentic with somebody and saying, listen, we 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 have decided that you are not the fit that we want for our company. 
we like you. You're a great person, but you don't fit with us right now. Mm -hmm. We would love to find a way to, you know, maybe help you get a different type of employment or whatever. You know, we'd love to, you know, we'd love to offer you some type of whatever, however it works within the company structure of how they're firing or letting go of people works in a uh, legal and um, ethical manner. Because sometimes people just don't fit within companies and it's okay. It's okay to leave a job and it's okay to, to let someone go. It's fine. But why are we not having these communications? Why does there have to be quiet quitting? Is quiet quitting because people don't feel that they can actually talk to somebody without right. somebody being a total jerk to them about their concerns and needs within an organization and quiet firing? It, it's just... Quiet firing is just not okay with me. No, I've experienced not. it and it's one of the most demeaning things because it's underhanded. Just tell me you don't want me to work with you anymore. Just, I'd rather somebody punch me in the face than go behind me and pretend that they're my friends or act like I'm being gaslit and I don't know what's happening. Oh, just absolutely. Be authentic. I'd rather, I just rather somebody say, I don't like you. Great. Now I know where you stand, right? Like, like, let's, let's stand somewhere together and know what's happening is passive aggressive uh, behaviors of both. It's just not, I just think it's ridiculous. Like just, can we have a conversation? And that's, That's and and that's the problem. And that's where it becomes a problem and it shouldn't be. It mm-hmm. should not be a problem for you to actually have a conversation with me to tell me why, one, you're letting me go, yeah. or two, what I need to do to work here to be a better person or to, yeah, and, or to, uh, you know, or actually not even to be a better person to fire me up to why I should be here. But people are not equipped anymore. Well, you're right, because the opportunity isn't there for people to think that they could help somebody improve. Right. Rather than just looking at them as, let's say, a wait, well, where are the conversations of maybe the person doesn't even have reference to realize that they're not doing the job that they need. And a lot of companies don't even lay that out. Exactly. You don't even know what your job is. You know, I've, I've also had experiences like that where I'm just assumed to know that my position means whatever my position means. It's like, well, but what does that mean? And then all, because that gives people the opportunity to start adding more things to your plate. Oh yeah. The last job I had, the last job I had, actually, there was no job description. I actually created the position. I created the department. I created the delivery model for this whole company. And at the end of the day, when they sent me on my way, I was told it was because things weren't working. I like, in what way? I, I, you just gave me a review three months ago at, at the six month. It was a night. This was at the nine month point. I'm like, uh, okay, so you gave me a review at six months. You gave me a raise. We're at nine months. All my reviews from the customers we have have been fantastic. Um, I just built out this whole department based on a job that wasn't even here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what exactly is not working? Mm-hmm. And that's the the non the lack of no communication that's there. So when it comes to that point, like I say, you've got someone like me who is an over communicator. I want to know. Just tell me. <laughs> I'm fine. Let me know. I'll fix it. If it's unfixable, well, then let's go our separate ways. If I am not able to do it, I'm not going to stay. Okay. Trust me. I will go someplace else. But if I'm able to do it, at least tell me what it is so I can do it, right? Well, there's no, there's no metrics. No, there aren't the any. Thing, there's, there's these un, unrealistic expectations without metrics. Sure, there are plenty of companies that have their stuff together and that's the way it is. But kind of like you, um, I built out a whole department completely. I defined the job. I defined all the pieces and all the parts. And somehow, you know, I'm defining what that looks like, but that doesn't give me any structure, 
listen, I like to do what I like to do. That's why I'm an entrepreneur. I like to do things. Exactly. I don't want people to tell me what to do. I don't want you to tell me what to do. However, there is a level of when you work with people that there is some type of construct that outlines what things look like, right? Like you need, right. people need, people need descriptions and understanding and direction. I mean, great. I'm self-driven person, fan freaking tastic, right? Like I am a very self-driven individual, but I also need to know how far I can drive. And that's, that's the other thing I was noticing in my past when dealing with this kind of stuff is I'm an overachiever. So you don't give me borders and tell me you do this. I'm going to be in everybody else's shit. I'm going to be like, well, that person didn't, you know, this, this job didn't get picked up. And I see that it's sitting there. Well, I'm bored out of my mind. So let me go ahead and I'll do that. Or I'll do this bored, meaning like I have things to do, but I like to learn. So I'm somebody who will overreach and not like, oh, Stella's not doing her job. I'm going to go like sit at her desk and do her job. But for instance, there's a circumstance like, let's say blog writing for a company and everybody is supposed to contribute. Really, you know, you're not the contributor. They want people that are like, I do marketing, but they want all the people that are doing the services to write blogs because they're more, they have a lot more, um, experience with the topic matter, right? I would be writing it from a marketer, not from an experienced person. Yet nobody is picking up the ball. And so you you want to ghostwrite. Like, well, then I'll ghostwrite. I mean, I can, we need to keep content going. Like, that's my job to keep content going, to keep things busy. And then I want to ghostwrite. And then you get your hands slapped. Like, well, no, you're not supposed to. Well, then who's going to, no one, there's no metrics for exactly. me to, like, where is the space? People need it. Self-focused people, non-driven people, everybody needs some sense of direction and knowing where they are within an organization. Are you doing good? Or are you not doing good? Kind of like you. Don't tell me I'm doing good and give me a raise. And a couple months later, now you want to let me go. Well, you had two months to talk to me about what the problem is. And you had the whole nine months, you had the whole nine months before that to tell. Exactly. Every week so to much. Tell. It's just frustrating. I think communication has shifted so heavily in business now. I really dislike authenticity and I really dislike people being transparent. And you know what? It gets me in trouble being authentic and transparent. And you know what? I've had to learn to just accept that. Yeah, Somebody asked can. me something. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not really here to kiss your ass. I'm just not here to dance around. It's not working for me. It's not working for me. Let's figure out the problems. But this is also a societal thing, Marty. This oh, is I totally not agree. business. It's just oh, society I, as a whole. 100% agree. I actually met with a city leader because uh, I'm on one of the uh, state boards or state councils for um broadband here in Oregon and uh one of the city leaders is on it from one of the towns uh, in Oregon and he reached out to me for just something separate from the council but um in his area he's looking for uh, a way for his um city department heads to be better um uh better community servants you know better uh more receiving or more computer com uh, community focused right they want to be they want their departments to be more focused on the, on the, the community around. So they're more focused on being receptive. You know, uh, I always call it basically customer focused, you know, just more receptive, more uh, easygoing. Um, but he didn't want to make it this big old process. And, you know, I didn't want, he was trying to find a different way of doing it. And I said, oh, well, absolutely. What you're really talking about is just being, being customer focused. Like I just, like I just said to you. And so I went through this training with him just real quick, just give him the bullet points on it. And he's like, well, yeah, that sounds really great. That sounds like something we could do. And I talked to him about how I had done it a while back in, in Utah. And I said, you know, what made it really work is I initially went with the board of directors who really loved it. And then they brought in all the department heads because that was the problem is it was this toxic environment inside of the facility. The departments did not get along and they were not talking to each other. Mm. And I said, once we get them all talking to each other, mm -hmm. 
I guarantee it's not going to be a problem anymore. Sure, but it's getting people. And then to once do that. we got them together and bought into it, it was great. And then I started talking to him, and he said, "You know what? I never even thought about that." Because I said, if you can get your department heads thinking this same way, it all of a sudden doesn't become a directive. It becomes an ecosystem. And everyone is- How do people not understand that? How is that not common understanding? I know that that probably sounds like not nice for me to say, but I just don't get it. Like, it just sounds like common sense that within an organization- or a business that all things would have to want to somehow participate with one each of one another to make it work. It's like saying, oh, you have a car and all the engine parts don't want to work together. Well, the car ain't going anywhere. You know, it's not, no. hello. Wow. They all want to, they all want to participate, but the last thing people talk about is communication and effective forms of, it is the last thing that they consider. And I, I never, it, it always, when I bring it up in a group, it like, it's this light bulb that goes off. People go, oh my gosh. Yeah. No one goes, well, that's stupid. No, we're not going to do that. It's like, it's like they remember all of a sudden, oh yes, we need to have effective communication. It's like people forget it, but it's because we get, we as Americans, we get something shiny and cool to use to replace effective communications because we can send it an LOL or an emoji. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that, but, but those things too are also areas that people don't understand that we're, that we're missing. You know, this is just an amazing conversation because communication is just, it's, it's just crazy in the digital world. Yes, it is. Everything we do, the way that, you know, I wrote an article about this not that long ago in regards to how emojis and, and writing and all of that, all of those things are misinterpreted because all we're time. not, we have no voice, no nope. inflection, nope. no body language. And I, I don't remember the statistic. I want to say it's something like 80% of communication is visual. You know, but that's what I believe. I don't remember now. And maybe it's a little less than that, but it was high. It was like, I believe it's over 75% that can, that communication is nonverbal communication. How you look at somebody, how you're, how, how you emphasize a word, how your body structure is, you know, like how you're holding yourself. Are you cross-armed? Are you open? Are you leaning in? Are you turning away to move? Like all of these give us context to what's happening. Yet, you know, with these digital things, it's like we're we're spending so much time debating what is really being what's being said here, and we often have a negative bias automatically. We immediately go to a negative bias of well, what does that mean? That's just human nature because you're trying to protect yourself and you're trying to navigate not knowing the unknown. Like, what does this mean? I can't tell you how many times I had communication with a specific client of mine that I, the communication was so bad that, and this was years ago, um, but it was very digitally focused that I just was like, what does that mean? Like, I don't understand. And the more that I would want clarity and I would write things out, the more that the person would get agitated. Like, like, do you really need this much communication? It's like, well, yes, because sure, for example, is not clear. Do you want me to do X, Y, or Z? Sure. Well, it's yes or it's no. Sure is a very veiled word that often can be used in a passive aggressive statement. Sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. Right? Like, so that word isn't clear. It could be, yes, it's kind of like that thing I made the other day. It's like, yes, 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 no, no, yes, right. <laughs> yes, no, yes. You know, like the way that we talk, like, yep, nope. <laughs> you know, like that means no. But sure is not a clear and direct communication. And and people that are in higher management or dealing directly with people don't understand that all of these communications have a lot to do with people's psyche right? Like how it affects the way someone's going to work, the way they're going to interpret, the way that they're going to feel. And if we're more clear, it's really important. Do you want me to do this? Yes, I would. No, I don't. And what you're talking about is what I always 
always go right back to is this what I just put up on the screen for everybody is this basic freaking communication model. Yeah, someone talking, someone receiving, and then this message that's going out. And it's a channel, whatever we're using, there's a channel that this message goes across. And what you're talking about right now, so the, the channel is the media, whatever that we're using, mm -hmm. the noise is what conflicts it, how we pick it up, how we perceive it, what gets in the way, what distorts it, that can mm -hmm. be our understanding. And mm -hmm. just because I intend it to mean something else and you yep. receive it as something else, guess what? That's noise for that freaking message. And it gets so messed up and we don't pay attention to this stuff anymore. So then what comes back from that message is a totally distorted message from what we did. And this, this whole thing breaks down. But if we could have clear messages without any noise, but what happens, we don't do this anymore because we don't have interpersonal communication. We don't take the time to listen. No. To have a talk, look, I'm talking to you right now. You're hearing me, I'm hearing you. I'm listening to you through a, cue, a, a clear channel. You're hearing my voice. I'm hearing your voice. We're doing perfectly fe good feedback back and forth. <laughs> you know, this is a clear channel for the two of us. We're doing good. Hey, there we go. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't happen too much anymore. And it's unfortunate. When you take away this form of interpersonal communication, because people say, well, I hate meeting on Zoom. I'm like, okay, sorry. Shouldn't hate yeah. that too much. It's, I think to me, it's so telling because to me, a digital meeting is so telling. You, can, you can't you can hide <laughs> in a digital meeting what someone's doing. Literally, it is so telling whether they are agitated, if they're plugged in, if they really are truly believing what you're saying or if they're not believing what you're saying. You can literally stop and say, is this landing with you? Is this okay? I love one-on-one -on -one meetings with Zoom. Love it. Yeah, it's super important because when we're looking at conversations with people, like you said earlier, Marty, people don't people don't like communication, meaning they don't, it's just like, let's get it done, let's get it, you know, like when I did the strengths test recently, if nobody's ever done that, oh it's my a God, business yeah. test. It's amazing. It gives you, I think, like 31 strengths and they uh they record them from one to 30. And you take this test and you find out what your top three to five are. And my top is communication, responsibility, and learning. And so for me, it's vital when I, I write an email that I, I, I look at it in, in a specific manner. It's like, okay, what did the person say? Am I addressing what they're saying? Am I saying hello to them, making sure that I'm addressing them, you know, saying, oh, hello, and I hear what you're saying, and this is my thoughts on the matter, and then offering them an ability to, like, if my opinion's different than theirs, offering them an ability to counter that. Well, I also would love to hear your opinion. This is my professional opinion, but what do you have to offer? So I'm always looking at every bit of communication, but I also think I over overdo it probably similar to you because I think it's also what I've learned is a trauma response yeah. by not being able to be understand and be heard. You yep. learn to uh, speak out. And when you say something, you're already thinking 10 steps ahead about like, well, that might offend somebody, or I want to make sure that that comes off right. These yeah. are all really self-aware and, and positive traits to have. You know, but there are just so many people who are like, don't want people to communicate. I remember I met with a, a a new client recently and I had dealt with a client where they just were not interested in my communications. Like I would write lengthy, important conversations about what we were doing and the responses back were very short, terse, and really didn't address what I was saying. And then I'd have to re-go back because the person was just very busy. They weren't rude or mean, or I don't believe it was intentional to dismiss me. It was that they were just so in their freaking head that they had no time for me. And so when I, I met with this new client, I thought, you know, from here on out, when I, when I do consultations, my automatic questions are, what are your values? This is my communication style. What is yours? Because mm -hmm. if you're not going to be engaged in communicating through this project with me thoroughly, then I don't want to do this with you. And it was so amazing to 
have somebody who I could tell really wanted those thorough communications, like please dot the top, dot the I's and cross the T's and, and, and write these things down in order and give me diet. Like I want to know. And in doing that, finding that match, that person who wanted that really transparent and, and I don't know, business building relationship, building conversation, I mean, we just bonded like that. I mean, it was amazing. And the communications back and forth were smooth. Everybody was on the same page. Nobody had questions. There wasn't like, well, what's happening? It was like, well, it's all lined out here and we all know. And and that's just how I've been trying to do things thereafter because I'm just so tired, you know, of wanting to communicate and, and make sure things are, everybody's on the same page rather than assuming. Isn't it important to make sure that we're not creating assumptions in conversations that we're repeating back to somebody? Is that what you were meaning? Did I interpret that correctly? Absolutely. Because we have our own biases, you know? We, we do. We, do. we do. And we will have our own biases. And like I tell people, you cannot tell someone that their assumptions or their feelings are not valid. And that's yep. where it really comes down to. Because if you tell someone that, well, what you're saying, what you're feeling isn't true or isn't valid, uh, you're wrong. Because it's very real to them. <laughs> it's 100% real to them. And the only way that you can ever get to some sense of equality or equity or some level of understanding in a conversation is to have a conversation. Because if you go off of your perception through a text or an emoji or whatever, and just leave it at that, mm-hmm. you're selling yourself and that person short. And realistically, sure. in this whole mindset of going back to the whole, what we're talking about here, quiet quitting, that's the point. I mean, literally, you're, you're not giving people an opportunity to grow. You're not giving people yeah. an opportunity to thrive. You're just letting them by not leading them down the road where they should be. I mean, it's right. really up to you as a manager. It's up to you as a leader. It's up to you as someone who leads people. Are you talking to them? Do you know what motivates them? Do you, mm-hmm. do you know why they're even at your company, working within your department, working within your structure? Mm-hmm. Why, did they, why did you hire them to begin with? Mm-hmm. Because if, if you don't know those questions, then they, they shouldn't be there in your organization. I mean, honestly, because literally you, they got there for some reason. <laughs> right. And if that's the, if that's, look, and if that getting them in the door got them to the point that they get to sit there and quiet quit, that says something about whoever hired them. Because uh, I would be thinking, how did they get past the interviewer? Because literally someone coming into an organization is literally looking to grow within the, cor- the cor- corporate culture or grow within the organization that doesn't demonstrate growth. So no. the conversation or communication or motivation broke down somewhere. Well, also on your point too, with all,